Hello there, Mambinos. Um, today I'm bringing you some highlights from a GS Cup tour held by the um, Warrior Esports clan. Um, it was my first taste of GS Cup action, like in any format. So I didn't really know what to expect. This is the team I brought. Um, it kind of needs work, but um, yeah, I'm just going to do like a quick highlight reel from Swiss. And here's the first game against Salty Sylveon, who I know is a good player. Um, this was round one. My team kind of revolves around Kyogre, basically. I'm doing it in a 1.25 speed, because otherwise this would be a very long vid. I just let Landorus in case he led Groudon. Um, but he didn't. He led Lapras and Talonflame. So fully expecting the Tailwind and uh, G-Max Resonance from the Lapras. I switch into Kyogre here to take the Resonance and also it brings the rain in case Talonflame went for a fire type move into Celesteela. Um, looks like I'm mulling it over a bit here, but I'm pretty sure that is what I end up doing. It's so weird in sped up, listen to the music. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I bring in Kyogre and I max Airstream the Talonflame. Lando goes back. In comes Kyogre and brings the rain. The Lapras Max is as predicted. And then Celesteela maxes. I was kind of hoping he um did throw the fire type move at Celesteela since it's a weakness policy. And not the Tailwind. But the, the Tailwind does make a lot more sense. So yeah, there's the Tailwind. And there's the Resonance. Which actually throws into Celesteela, which is smart. He probably knew I was switching out. I could have stayed in with um, Lando really and gone for like a rock slide, I guess. Go for the airstream here. No slash on the time flame, so we knocked the time flame straight out. Was a crit. I'm, I guess that mattered since the Vel was up. So we get a speed boost and a uh, beast boost, spack boost. It's another plus one speed, plus one special attack. In comes Groudon here, changing it to Sun, which is obviously very bad news for Celesteela. So I just switch into Lando, knowing full well that a nice type move could come if he predicts that, but at least I would get the Intimidate off on Groudon. And I go for a Max Guard because I didn't want um to take a fire type move in the Sun. So Kyogre goes out, Lando comes in, gets the Intimidate off on the Groudon. There's the Max Guard. Sword Stance. He may have predicted the Intimidate coming in to make himself at least plus one, I guess. And he gives him the Max Lightning, but we protected. So now I'm just going to switch Kyogre straight back in. Um, I don't think there's a chance he's ever thrown the Lightning at Lando. So I'm just going to Steel Spike. Drizzle, Sun Sun go away, come back another day. Fire Punch doesn't do a whole lot at all, but does activate our weakness policy. Lapras goes for the Lightning straight into Celesteela, but we tank it like an absolute beast, because Celesteela is a bulky boy. I've actually got no special attack investment on this thing, I'm just relying on like weakness policy and beast boost. So still spike into the Groudon doesn't quite pick up the kill, but uh, does raise our defenses. Lapras loses its max. Obviously, so does Celesteela. I think here I check the turns on the Tailwind. And there's only one turn left. 
So the double protect is the option I go for here. Just because at that point then uh, Celestila will be outspeeding. Um, the, the risky thing here would be a sword stance coming out from Groudon. Precipice Blades comes out, which wouldn't affect Celestia anyway, but uh, would do a lot of damage to Kyogre and the Thunder going to Celestia. So there goes the Tailwind. Um, I don't want a Water Spell in case Lapras is Water Absorb. But that might be what I end up doing anyway, I can't really remember right now. This is like two days later than when the tournament happened. I go for the Thunder, in Electric Terrain, I know it's not going to miss, and from the Flash Cannon into Groudon. The Groudon protects, not really an issue. We go for the Thunder. She does a decent chunk, and paralyzes. Flash Cannon into the Protect, and Lapras lands the Thunder, and finishing off Celesteela. Crit didn't matter. I was dying anyway. Life Orb. Veil disappears, which is important. I'm going to Lando here, because I can. Intimidating that Groudon once more. Puts it to neutral. So I switch in Amoongus here on... Um, on the lander side. I don't know what I clicked here. Maybe I didn't do that. No, I didn't do that. I just go for the Thunder on Lapras and hit the U-turn on Groudon, which I really hope kills because I'm not 100%. Lapras protects while it tries to go for... Um, sorry, Lapras paralyzes while it tries to go for protect. Lando goes for the U-turn and kills Groudon. And now I can freely bring in uh, Amoongus. Shiny Among Us. We land the Thunder. And take out Lapras. I'm not entirely sure that para matters all that much. Because I could still always just Rage Powder this turn. And kill it. Like I would I would have just Thundered into Lapras here. And... Rage Powdered. I opted to protect, but I would have Rage Powdered if Lapras is there as well. Go for the Water Sport. And it's not Sash, that's just luckily how it survives on like 1 HP. Goes for the Moonblast. Does an amazing chunk. Like, I want to guess if that's Specs or, or is that really just how strong Xerneas is. Uh, now I can just go through the Ice Beam and Giga Drain because he can't target us both. And the battle's cancelled and we take the win there. Um, hang on, I'm just going to pause it a sec. I actually lost the footage for the rest of that set, but I lost game 2 and then won game 3. So I won the set 2 one, round 1. So now we're on to round 2 here versus Rem. Um, and very similar team. He had a Groudon team versus my Rain team. He opens Groudon Whimsicott. And I went Lando Celestila like I did last game. So we get the Intimidate off straight away on Groudon. The drought is up. Similarly to the last game, I just bring in Kyogre to change the weather and protect Celestila. And I go for the Steel Spike because I kind of expect possibly a Cobra Berry on... Whimsicott. Plus I thought if, if he Tailwind's up, that it doesn't matter, the plus one speed isn't going to matter, but the plus one defense might. So, the ring goes up. We max Celestila. Oh, he decides to max Groudon here at minus one.
So yeah, they've gone for the max growl on at minus one attack, which is risky. I think the Dynamax animation should just be at 1.25 speed, because it's a lot better. Doesn't waste our time. Uh, so Wim's quite actually goes for Protect, which is fine by me. He goes for the Flare at minus one in the rain, and it really doesn't do a whole lot, but it does however change the weather. Activates my policy. So we're now plus two special attack. Max still spikes through the protect. Only just short of a kill. If I had any sort of splack investment, I think it would have killed. We get the defense boost. And now I'm just switching back in Lando to intimidate that crowd on further. And I'm going to go for the guard, but in hindsight, I didn't think I needed to. Because he withdraws Whimsicott. And brings me ho -Oh. A nice shiny golden ho -Oh, by the way. Bring in Lando. We intimidate them both, which is nice. Because I, I do expect ho -Oh to be um, physical. Because of Sacred Fire. So now Groudon's at minus two. ho -Oh's at minus one. Goose and Max Flare into the Protect. So now I get a, a free switch in back into Kyogre. I'm going to airstream the Ho-Oh in case it decides to switch out again. So Lando goes out, Kyogre back in, Rain is up. He just does go for the Sacred Fire in the rain. It doesn't do too much but it does burn me, but it's not too much of an issue since I'm um, special. Goes for another Flare at minus two in the rain. Does like no damage to Celesteela. But it does bring the sun back up. So we've got the plus two airstream now going into Ho-Oh. And that's very little, so I have to immediately assume that that's assault vest. Take some burn damage. Um, we are safe to protect again. Since we attack that turn. And there's no max. But I don't feel like I need to. Since we are stream there, we're never faster. Um, I, I think I do protect, but I didn't switch out. I think he expects me to switch out here. He switches out ho -Oh to bring in Urshifu. I go for the Ice Beam. So it turns out I could have not protected there. Actually, no, I couldn't have. No, yeah, the protectors actually come in nicely. And staying in there for some free damage on Groudon when he didn't expect it. I'm pretty sure he expects me to switch in um, Lander or Staturn. On plus one speed. So I feel like I could go for a Flamethrower into the Groudon just to finish it off. Flamethrower is neutral damage. But I'm in the sun at plus two. So I can intimidate the Groudon. Intimidate the Urshifu. The Groudon's now actually at minus three. He brings back in Ho-Oh, which is smart. Urshifu's faster than the plus one Celesteela. And it actually kills, so I have to assume that's banded. And yeah, I've got no speed investment on Celesteela, so I guess plus one isn't as fast as max speed. I don't know, though. That can't be right. Maybe that is just how much Wicked Blue does. So we get Kyogre back in for free here. Um, this is a goat play, I'm not going to lie. So I use her into the Urshifu and switch in Amoongus. Knowing full well that Groudon's going to be coming in here. He thinks he's going to have weather control. But if I switch in Amoongus here, he switches out to Groudon. And my Scarf Landorus U-turns. But he goes for the Wicked Blow. He has to be Scarf. To be faster than Landorus, he has to be Scarf. So I go for the U-turn. So I can get Kyogre back in and retain Weather Control, which I am very proud of that play. Because now, he's absolutely forced to take 
a water spout from a max speed Kyogre in the rain. There's nothing you can do. Unless, um... Unless he speed ties with me, with the Groudon. Because that's what he can do, because I'm, I'm a timid max speed Kyogre. If he's a, if he's a jolly max speed Groudon, he could, um, Precipice Blades and hit us both to reduce the damage. But there's the Scarf or Shifu going for Wicked Blow. Nice chunk into Amoongus, but doesn't kill us. And now we can Water Spot for free. And pick up two clean KOs. And then comes the, uh, what I'm still assuming is Assault Vest Ho-Oh. And again, the Whimsicott. Um, I know Whimsicott's don't often carry grass moves, so just Rage Powder. I know Whimsicott can ignore the Rage Powder, but I'm always killing Whimsicott here. Whimsicott goes for Protect, which I didn't, I didn't understand that play at all. Go for the Rage Powder. Go for the Water Spout. We're faster than the ho -Oh. And that thing takes it so well. A Water Spout from a max special attack, max health in the rain. That has to be Assault Vest, right? I never found out, but that has to be. Goes for the Brave Bird into uh, Amoongus. The Cobra Berry's not going to be enough at that range. He takes some recoil damage. And in comes Landorus. So I'm fairly certain with Scarf, Lando, if he opts to Tailwind, it means ho -Oh dies from Water Spout. And I go for Rock Slide with Landy. The Whimsicott does go for Tailwind, so I can't see him knocking out Kyogre in one here. Goes for the Brave Bird. Into Kyogre. And he crits me and absolutely destroys me. And I'm like, oh my god, if I miss a Rock Slide here, the, the, uh, the recoil is actually enough to take out the ho -Oh, luckily enough. And I think the Rock Side would have killed it as well. But the Rock Side is enough to finish off the Whimsicott. And we take Game 1 versus Ram. Now, I actually lost Game 2, which I'm not going to include, because this is a highlight row. <laughs> and here's Game 3. And he leads Porygon 2 and Groudon. And I lead Raichu and Landorus. So again, we get that Intimidate off on Groudon, from the off, from the open. Uh, Porygon 2 is going to get its download. And I believe in attack. Yeah, that's fine for us. Because I'm a Salt Vest Raichu, it's in attack. I'm just going to U-turn and fake out the Porygon. I'm not really sure... What I expect from Groudon, maybe switching out to reset its uh, attack stat. But I don't want the trick from going up, to be honest. So yeah, he does withdraw Groudon, so he doesn't uh, reset as the attack stat. Sets the Misty Terrain, so there's no Paralysis, I guess, is what he was thinking there. Obviously, there's no way else throwing an Electro-type move at um, Groudon. So we do use her now and get the fake out off on Porygon. That's a, that's a free turn, turn one really. Um, I think a good Kyogre here. Yeah, that's what I would do now, so I guess that's what I did then. Um, I think my best chance is double targeting the, the Porygon. Because I feel like... Um, Tabby Fini switching back out into Groudon to take the electric type move. See, so Fini does get back out into Groudon to change the weather. Um, obviously, Water Spout isn't going to do too much in the sun, but it's still going to do a nice chunk to that uh, Groudon, I think. So, Voltress out, back into Landy to intimidate that Groudon once again, and we're back where we were, turn one. Groudon back to minus one. We go for the water spout. Such a nice chunk to that Groudon. In the sun, you just wouldn't expect it really. 
But Porygon 2 does get a Trick Room off, which is annoying, especially for Scarf. Landorus sat there. Uh, now, I think this was a nice little surprise on my part. Max in Kyogre to change the weather back to rain, I think is what I ended up doing. Because I don't want to take any hits unnecessarily. Um, I go for the slow user now because it's safe. I don't expect um, Lando to be doing too much more in this match now that Trick Room's up. There was the threat of Ice Beam from Porygon, but I, I did kind of guess that Porygon would be wanting to recover here to get some, to get some health back before Kyogre hits it. So it does go for the recover, so the U-turn is indeed safe. Crown goes for the Fire Punch into Kyogre. I'm not really sure what he was expecting to come in there. Maybe the Lando or the Amoongus. But we get to kill Groudon with a geyser and reset the rain for Kyogre. Which is honestly fantastic. Then we can slow the U-turn. Back out into Raichu, I believe. Which is obviously now very free to fire off electric type moves now that Groudon is dead. In comes Ho-Oh, this Assault Vest ho -Oh. Gave me a lot of grief in Game 2 actually, the ho -Oh pretty much won it for Game 2. Go for the Rain Boosted Geyser and switch back out into Lando to intimidate the ho -Oh again. So he switches up Porygon 2, which is interesting, for Tapu Fini. Maybe he thought I was going to throw a geyser at Porygon 2, but I'm always firing at Ho-Oh, since Ho-Oh is definitely what gave me most of the issues in Game 2. But it looks like the Ho-Oh is maxing, but it's at minus 1 now, which is great for me. And he's not going to want to airstream because then I would be faster in the trick room. So he does go for the flare. Into the Lando in the rain doesn't do too much. And he's at minus one. But it does set the sun. So now I'm going for a geyser into Ho-Oh. When it's a salt vest and in the sun. So it's not doing much at all. But we do get the rain back up. Um, so now I want to attack the Finny because I think Hobo is just going to try and set the sun again I guess and I want to cycle this Intimidate for sure because this Hobo is going to give me a lot of problem and also I want to save it so I can rock slide this Hobo after the Trick Room ends so even if Amoongus dies here it, it's worth it to keep Landorus around So Landorus goes back. In comes Amoongus. Hobo goes for the airstream into the Cobra Berry. Which we survive nicely. They get the speed boosts in the trick room. We go for the max lightning. Which does a very nice chunk to Finny and changes the terrain to electric terrain. Which you might think is like counterintuitive with Amoongus on the team. But we take the Moonblast pretty easy here. Nice. Um, but really, I want, just want to get damage off. I don't, I don't plan on sporing anything. So Kyogre's max ends. ho -Oh still has one more turn of max. Um... One more turn of Trick Room, but we're now going to be faster because he airstreamed, so I think I'm pretty safe just to Thunder again. In Terrain. Oh, it looks like I went for the Water Spout. And 
and Giga Dream to Finny. I opt to double attack here. He retreats Ho Ho one max turn early. So we waste a turn of max to get Porygon 2 back in. Which I find odd. Now it's got the attack boost again. But Finny goes to protect, which is fine. And I go for the water spout in the rain. Which for sure will be two shot on that Porygon next turn. So I go for an Ice Beam and a Giga Drain. Not really sure why Ice Beam there. Kyger avoided, but I don't think that's a problem. And Amoongus survives pretty easily there. I could have just gone for Water Spot there. Got some damage on Finny as well. Because I'm pretty sure the Spout plus the Giga Drain might have killed. So maybe that was a mistake on my part. In comes the ho, -ho again. I go for the water spout and switch in. I switch in right you. I'm not entirely sure why I did that. I thought that's a little bit unsafe. Finny could fire off a scold at this range. But I guess I was thinking that the Brave Bird would do less damage into Raichu being an electric type. Finny goes for Protect, which is fine by me. And I'm faster than the Ho-Ho. So I get that water spout off again. Ho-Ho goes for a Brave Bird. Into the Raichu, which we survive nicely because we're an electric type. And he just quits there. I didn't get a chance to win. I was a little bit worried he was going to try and fleece me of the win there. By quitting and saying that he won. Because that was game three. But yeah, he just quits. And then he pops up saying GG. So I took the win there. 2-1. So now we are 2-0 after two rounds. And we go over into game three. Which is against Sean. And he leads Regilecki and uh, Indidi. He's also got the Shadow Rider Calyrex in the back. So I was expecting Indidi Calyrex to be honest. So game one here is a little bit different to the other games so far. I think there's no way in hell he's firing an electric type move off in front of Raichu. So I swap in Celesteela. To take the resisted psychic, psychic type move maybe. I couldn't fake out because of Psychic Terrain, obviously. Um, the Indeedee goes for the Protect, which is really annoying. And Renegade goes for Electro Web, and very luckily Celesteela avoids it. I didn't really think about how that could bypass the Lightning Rod. So I go for the Max Lightning. Doesn't do a whole bunch. And I've just given Regilecki Electric Terrain. So I'm going for a Geyser now into a Regilecki because that needs to go. And I switch into Raichu. He switches out in DD, which is fine by me, and brings in Eveltel. We switch out into Raichu, ready to take some Lightning Rod. Goose for Electroweb again. So now we are plus one with Raichu. Kyogre takes it. Takes a big chunk, because obviously Electric Terrain is up. Kyogre is now at minus 2 speed, which isn't great. But we do take out the Regilecki, which isn't sashed. It was a crit, but I don't think it mattered. I'm pretty sure a, a Geyser in the rain would take out Regilecki. 
So in comes the Calyrex. Um, so I didn't really expect um, Calyrex. I didn't expect Avatar to stay in, so I thought Avatar would switch out into Indeedy and um, Calyrex would expand in force. Um, I didn't do the calc. I don't know if Raichu survives an expanding force. So I just opt to nuzzle the Calyrex just to lower, lower its speed. That's all I wanted to do. Like I said, I think there's no way in how Ivato isn't either protecting or switching out. So I'll leave that alone. You don't want to take a plus one in electric terrain attack from Raichu here. So yeah. Ivato switches out back into Ndidi. To set the psychic terrain pretty much exactly as I thought it would happen. But I switched out my Kyogre because I didn't want to take the, the expanding force and go into a Valtel, which obviously is immune to these psychic type attacks. And he opts to Dynamax rather than expanding force, he opts to Dynamax. So Raichu's actually. Potentially very safe here if he does go into Kyogre. I like the cool blue Dynamax colouring as well for Calyrex. To actually see it in battle is pretty cool. He goes for the Mindstorm into what was Kyogre, so a Valtel takes no damage from that. So that's a great turn. We switch in to a non effective Dynamax move and Nuzzle. So now we can just free a Dark Pulse. And I'm going to Volt Switch. Do I Volt Switch? I should Volt Switch. Don't do anything else. Yes, Volt Switch. Maybe I should have just Thunderbolted. Like, why do I want to get in anything else? I guess Lando is quite good here. If Calyrex is paralysed. He withdraws his Maxed Mon after doing no damage from his Dynamax. So that's obviously fantastic for us. The Misty Seed is interesting on the Eveltal. So we Volt Switch, plus one, Volt Switch into Indeedy. Uh, we go into the Celesteela here. And we Dark Pulse. He's Culverberry, so he's going to take half damage from this. But thanks to the Dark Aura ability boosting our Dark type moves, Eveltal knocks out even through the Culverberry. So now he's down to his last two moms, which is Ivaltel and a paralysed Calyrex. Uh, with it being a ghost psychic type, obviously Dark just ruins it. Um, I can't suck a punch because of the psychic terrain, so I will just go for the Dark Pulse. And Flash Cannon into Ivaltel to try and get some Spadef drops. No protects from anyone. Dark Pulse will take out Calyrex. And that thing's go down without even landing an attack, which is amazing. Uh, his Avalto goes for Snarl, which is interesting, in front of two physical attackers. Uh, sorry, special attackers. That is going to be quite annoying. But now it's a 1v4 situation with this Evalto. So I'm pretty sure that I can just whittle it down. I don't I don't think he's carrying um Roost, he's probably got Oblivion Wing. So I'm just gonna try and whittle it down, try and get another spin death drop. Oblivion Wing is a very cool animation, so I took a little screenshot of that. Get some yummy health back, then lose a bit from Life Orb. Goes for another snarl. So we're now like minus two on both things here. Fire off another flash cannon. Does like no damage and still no spadef drop. Um, I don't really want to like risk switching anything in yet, especially when I've got Raichu in the back. I could just wait for him to kill something, then bring in Raichu and fake out, or then like Thunderbolt before he gets a snarl off. So we'll just keep whittling this down. He could go for an Oblivion Wing himself here to regain some health, but again, he goes for another snarl. 
and I guess he was expecting the Rochu to come in, so he was just trying to weaken the Rochu. But I had no reason to switch out. He's got no item. We know that because he was Misty Seed. So I could just literally just keep doing this forever. He realizes that it's futile and surrenders game one. Now, again in game two, I um I think I opted for the same lead. Let's just wait and see. I can't remember right now. He does go same lead. We go Lando with Altel. Completely different lead. What am I talking about? So knowing that Avaltal is very good versus the uh, Calyrex, I definitely wanted to preserve it. Looks like I Dynamaxed Avaltal here. Why don't I remember doing that? Yeah, I want to say that I did Dynamax um, Landorus, but I couldn't quite remember. So I want to I want to rock fall in case he switches in um, Eveltel on that Regilecki side, and I give for Raichu so we can take no damage from Regilecki this turn, no matter what. If he does stay in, Quake obviously would do more damage, but like I said, if Eveltel switched in there, I didn't want to waste a ground type move. So indeed he goes for Protect again turn 1. Regilecki goes for the Volt Switch. But uh, yeah, we switched in Raichu so we could not take any damage this turn. Go for the Rockfall. Which is just shy of the kill. But then the Sand. The Sand will pick up the kill on Regilecki. So that's a great turn 1 for us. Regilecki down. Plus 1. Raichu. Sand up. Great turn one for us. So now the question is, probably is Calyrex going to come in here? Turns out no, it's uh, it's Urshifu. Seeing as how we can't uh, protect here, I'm going to go for the airstream into you. I switch into a Veltel, which in hindsight, was a bad play. Because I could have just Volt Switched for the same reason, to be honest. Uh, Indeed, he goes for the Follow Me this time. And Urshifu goes for Wicked Blow, which I then realised um, I am boosting with my Dark Aura ability, so that does so much. It does like 60%. And the Airstream goes into Indeed, not Urshifu. Nearly knocks out, but not quite enough. Now, I couldn't remember, and still don't, if Sucker Punch would work in Psychic Terrain because I'm a flying type, or do they have to be a flying type? I couldn't remember, so I didn't go for it. Um, instead, I opt to go for another Airstream into uh, Urshifu because Uh, Ivaltel should be quicker at plus one than Landorus. Misty Seed again. Indeed he goes for Follow Me. We get to kill Indeed here with the Oblivion Wing. And he'll just up a little bit of damage. And Life Orb ends up taking us lower to what we were. Then the Airstream goes into Eveltal, which is actually good. We need all the physical attacks we can going into Eveltal here. So now I've got a plus two speed Eveltal and Landorus. And they've got a very weak Eveltal. Weakened Eveltal. His last Mon is actually... Wait, is it still in the back? No, no, no. These are his last two Mons. 
Um, I kind of don't want to switch anything in here onto some big damage. So I just go for the Rock Slide, which I assumed would kill Ivalta. And Oblivion Wing the Urshifil. Because we're plus two speed, I can't I can't see him outspeeding us. Even if he's Scarf now, Ivalta would still outspeed it. So his Ivalta max is from like 30% health, maybe 40%. He goes for the Sucker Punch into a Valtel, which kills. Like, I don't know if it's Banded, or that's just the Dark Aura boost, but it killed, which I really didn't expect. And then, uh, we didn't kill the Valtel with Rock Slide, so we take an Airstream here, which does a massive chunk. I don't like how they've darkened the brightness on Max moves. I don't know why they've done that, and they should reverse it ASAP. So, with Sand and uh, Life Orb, his is going to go down next turn anyway. Psychic Terrain is still up. Uh, so I want to preserve Raichu for the fake out. I was thinking at this point, oh, have I made a mistake? I needed that sand because Life Orb plus sand would probably kill a Valsal this turn. The Psychic Terrain has one turn left. So I don't really want him to sucker punch me. Because Landorus is a flying type, I think he can sucker punch me. So I go for the Ice Beam rather than the Water Spout in case they take a lot of damage here. I switch in Raichu, expecting the Sucker Punch, which does happen, which is amazing. Kyogre, he actually targeted Kyogre, which is crazy. He forgot about his terrain. He goes for the Airstream, and I'm glad I went for Ice Beam. So down goes the Valtel. It's actually crazy that he forgot about his terrain. And I, again, that that he might be banded. So I go for fake out here because I think he's banded. I mean, I think I go for spout. I think spout would be stronger here. If he wasn't banded, he would have protected here. So yeah, I think that just confirms that he was banded. So we fake out and we water spout. And it's enough to take our Urshifu and we win that set. It was 2-1 actually. I did I did lose game 2. So we are now 3 and 0 in Swiss. Um there was one more round of Swiss, um round 4 and I lost in round 4. So I went I went 3-1 in Swiss in a four round Swiss, um making it into the top cut. Um I'm going to do another video for my top cut matches, but again, here's the team here. Um some of the spreads, they're pretty much all just like 252, 252, I think, except Amoongus. Um, I want to revise some of that. I want to like do some calcs and work out what I'm uh, going to be surviving and whatnot, how much speed I actually need. Um, Rindoberry was absolutely useless. I did expect to see more Rillaboom. Um, so I could revise that. But the only other thing I think I'd want would Scarf, but I think Scarf needs to stay on Landorus. Uh, so yeah, this is the team. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. It's just a bit of GS Cup action, something I've never done before. Um, I know a lot of people are expecting that to be the next format, so this might interest you. Um, come back next time for the Top Cup matches, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.